Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turn is speaking to Rupert Evans about a lot of his recent TV show projects, including Bridgerton and Charmed. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show. It's good to see you. Uh, it's great to be back. Nice to see you. How have you been? You I've been good. good. I've been good. I mean, I think that was like two years ago. I think the doorman, we did an interview for that. Yeah. And it does with the probably. pandemic. It feels like it was a lot longer than that. You're telling me. You're telling me. It's been a tough <laughs> one for everyone. A lot of people. I know. It's, uh, it's been hard. Yeah. But it's pretty exciting. You got a lot of cool projects. You know, Bridgerton just dropped, but also Charm, which is pretty cool. You're also directing Charmed as well, yeah, which is a really, yeah, really cool. Now. Yeah, it's that is good. so cool. Did that is that something that you were that just kind of happened, or was it like methodical that you really want to direct? I kind of really wanted to. <laughs> it was kind of you know my 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 biggest hope that you know doing the show they would let me uh, let me have a go. So yeah, they I think you know. I think there are kind of two types of actors. There's the actor that kind of, you know, is very focused on their job and their craft as an actor and they're great and that's great. And they yeah. kind of very focused and they learn, their, you know, and they do their job and they kind of go home. And then there's the other type of actor who's just incredibly nosy, who just asks, <laughs> you know, a huge amount of questions and like, what lens is that? And why are you doing that? And why is the camera, where, why is the lighting? And who, what do you do? And I am that kind of an actor. And so <laughs> eventually, uh, eventually they just kind of like say will you shut up and just have a go and so that's why <laughs> well you know it's interesting because i feel like that's always my question because people are around especially the cw these are amazing sets there's so much kind of happening with these shows right yeah, so yeah. i feel like there's always going to be questions so i feel like it might happen a lot more than we think that the like, actors want to go behind the camera because they see how yeah, cool everything yeah, is. It's funny because if you watch the shows, you know, every week and I watch a lot of them, you know, a lot of a lot of the CW shows and a lot of these are great shows, whether it's The Flash, um, you know, uh, Supergirl, which is yeah. now finished. But um, I had great friends on Supergirl and actually it was David Harewood who was on Supergirl, who's a British actor, although he uh, he, he plays an American on that show or mm -hmm. did. Um, he started directing Supergirl. Um, yeah. So I was like, uh, tell me, you know, so we used to meet up in Vancouver um, and he would tell me all about it. And he was the one who really pushed me to do it and said, you know, you should do this. And I said, I know I want it why I'm here. Yeah. So yeah, we kind of ended up, so he did, you know, he did one or two a season and I, you know, I'm doing now one or two a season. I've done now three uh, in total. And there are other actors I know, there's other shows like uh, Flash and Nancy Drew. I think there's one, one they've done one, one actor did one. So yeah. yeah. So I think, you know, I think it does happen, but uh, I, I'm sort of the only one on charm at the moment. So yeah. From the fun. acting perspective, when you kind of sign on to a project like Charmed, I think there's two things at play. There's one, there's the fact that Anytime there's an, a new kind of reimagination of a show that was very popular, there's always going to be kind of this overwhelming excitement to be part of it. But then there's also the CW component of it because we know, like you said, they have such an amazing track record of amazing shows that have season after season just pump out amazing content. Was that kind of when you signed on to the project, just kind of a lot of emotions overwhelming because of the charm component and then the <laughs> CW component? I'm curious yeah, about I think, that. You know, I really wanted to direct and yeah. that was a conversation that we had very early on yep. um, and they were very kind um, you know uh, um, the creator Jenny Ehrman and yep. Brad Summling who was the executive producer and who directed the pilot really has been my uh, sort of mentor through throughout yep. um, and there have been other directors and executive producers Stuart Gillard and Liz um, and Stuart uh, Liz and Craig, who who are the showrunners or were the showrunners for season two and three, they've now sort of moved on. Um, they really did sort of champion me as well. So yeah, um, I you know it was the plan, and you know it's great to do a show like this because you're doing so many episodes. We started off with twenty two, <laughs> um, because of the pandemic and stuff. We've now sort of had to kind of go down a little bit. Last year was eighteen, um, so you know it it it's just it allows you to really tell a story in a you know in a really broad way. You know it's like doing. You know, 18 hours of TV is crazy. You know, it's crazy. So, um, yeah. So and, and also, I think, I don't think, because sometimes, you know, I've done interviews 
um, for a lot of CW shows, and the turnaround time is a lot quicker oh, than people. <laughs> no, they would shoot it in. I mean, you know, as a director, you direct it in eight days. I mean, it's just nuts. It's like it's crazy. I, I always tell people it's sort of like they give you this sort of like you they give you the keys to a Ferrari, a really expensive <laughs> one with gold alloys, and they say so. You've got to drive it from here to there. And you've got eight days and you think, oh, that's, that's easy. That's great. But what they don't tell you is that you have to, it, it, you know, there are, there are like roadworks and there's like riots and people crying and screaming and asking you thousands of questions and you have to get it to the other end and it, and it, and it can't have a scratch on it because if it does, they will never let you direct again. <laughs> Um, and that's kind of what directing's like for these TV American TV shows is that you know you get given this amazing opportunity, a beautiful Ferrari, and you drive like crazy, but you can't hit anything, and it has to look damn good at the end. And you're ending up the last day kind of polishing it, like really carefully, like, and I brought it back in exactly the same condition as you gave it me, you know. So that's kind of how it works with the crazy, you know, it's it's a kind of crazy ride, but it's it's amazing and it's a great. I feel very lucky and very privileged, really. The yeah. early the early days of you being like a storyteller, you know, acting and everything, was it early on where you were curious? Like, was it when you started working on shows and movies um, yeah. like it? Were you Did you always want to direct, basically? That's my question. I, I no, no, I didn't always. I hadn't really thought about it uh, very early on. But <laughs> when you start doing so many shows and then you start, <laughs> you start seeing directors say stuff to you, you're like, Oh my God, you can't, you can't direct mm -hmm. like actors. This is crazy. Or, and then you're kind of sitting there thinking, yeah, huh, I think I, I could do this slightly differently or better. I could do this better. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm sure actors will be saying that to me. And then it's not until you have a go, you realize how, how it's really hard. It's like, because you don't realize the pressure directors are under. Well, I now. feel like you're doing you so no many, clue. you're doing, no. you're also wearing many hats. Like you're overseeing yeah. everything, right? Like yeah, it's crazy. And I didn't realize the prep and how important prep is, prep, you know, preparation and the, the time before you actually shoot is actually more important than a shoot, you know, in many ways, oh, absolutely. because that's really where you, you know, you create, you know, your, your, your story and, you know, you make decisions about what you want, what crane you need for that scene and yep. visually how it's going to look. So those things have become really important, but it's great fun. And the DP, you know, it's very, becomes integral. Are you obsessing about, I was about to ask, are you obsessing, like me and my show, like I'm always obsessed with like tech and getting cameras <laughs> and the levels. Like, <laughs> oh, my oh my God, you wouldn't believe it. You, I'm, I'm ringing people at three o'clock in the morning. Like, Where are you? Why aren't you awake? I, I'm awake. <laughs> If I'm awake, everybody should be awake. Uh, I try not to. My my wife, sort of, my wife, kind of says, "I'll see you in I'll see you in three weeks, honey." And I'm like, "What?" You know, as I start the sort of prep. So, oh, know, absolutely. Yeah. I did want to say though, switching gears a little bit to the acting perspective. I mean, you joined season two of Bridgerton this year, which yeah, was and yeah, and it was amazing. And that was great to watch the directors direct and the DPs doing. You know, the director of the oh, absolutely. Stuff. But I just my question is just kind of. A, back. You know, it's, it's just kind of a little bit of a general question. I mean, what's the mindset joining a show for season two after it having such a massive reception for season yeah. one? I'm curious about that. I know it was weird because, you know, <laughs> I kind of was like, you know, thinking, oh, my God, what's, you know, what are we going to do? You know, what's going to happen? And you yeah. turn up and you realize it's the same old stuff. It's just lovely actors having a great time. And I think they were as surprised as everybody how, how big it was. It was massive. Know? They're saying it's, it's one of the really biggest Netflix shows like it is. of all time right now, yeah. I think it's the biggest, has the largest viewing yeah. uh, on Netflix for English speaking. Um, yeah. And the string quartet versions of modern songs are the greatest thing ever. And I listen to them I mean, all the time. Isn't it a great idea? Isn't it a great idea? I mean, so I, good. Honestly, I think the showrunner um, for the season one and two, the guy is a lovely man called Chris Van Dusen, who's really, uh, you know, he's a genius. And actually, he's a very talented guy who's just. You know, I and I love the sort of uh, the Shondaland sort of uh, sort of slight take on re, you know like slightly altered reality or even heightened reality with the music and the costumes. I think it's they do something very clever there, and you know I think the actors, you know I think it just came in the right time, the right place, yeah. and the actors are, are great and are very committed, and everybody's incredibly committed to the show, and it yeah. feels like that when you go on it. You know, it really is amazing. Absolutely. Everyone's lovely. So I, I had a great time because it was no pressure for me. I'm not, I'm not, I just sort of danced in there and went, hey, you know, I'm, I was only in there. In, I was in and out, really. You know, I just feel like it's just such an interesting mindset because 
you show up as again there were a lot of new characters for season two and yeah. i always feel like that's just kind of a such a tough thing for so such massive shows because there's like all these questions about who's coming back who's coming and then all these new characters and people kind of have to literally take a second and be like wow like new bridgerton characters yeah like, oh i think God. it's harder for the actors it probably in season one than two i mean for me i had a great you know i didn't i mean you know i think i'm getting too old now to worry about things i sort of worry less about that kind of stuff yeah. it was just lovely you know jonathan bailey was very very kind and you know had a lot of things with him and um you know and and yep. you know it's just lovely and they sort of to have a ready-made family there was just great you know and and it enabled me to kind of just play and ask questions and make you know we just had fun it was just fun you know oh absolutely great, great fun you're a two-time guest of pop alternative and hopefully you know Whenever we have a new project, we'll continue to do it. And every time I we hope continue, no. I hope well, so. well, and then every time there's always going to be. I'm a big horror movie fan, so I'm always going to always bring up a movie you did. I want to see if you guess which one I'm talking about. The horror movie, yeah, I've seen it endlessly. The boy, oh, right? The boy, yeah, the boy. I love that one, and I brought yeah, it up last time. I, I love, love I love the boy. It did really well, <laughs> and um, you know, the director Will, Will Brett is he's, he's amazing. Brent. Does it blow and, your mind though where horror is going though? Because it keeps changing. Yeah. It's crazy to me, and I'm wondering if you want to direct a horror movie one day. I, that is actually something that I would really love to do, and I'm, I'm trying to write one right now. Actually, Whoa, so, yeah, awesome. Yeah. So I'm hoping I'm hoping to do. It's one. a crazy genre. It's a popular genre, but it's a chain. Like it's just an. It's growing, well, so well, much. You know, I think I think Europe is kind of catching on. You know, yeah. catching because I mean Canada, North America. You yeah. know, America have really you know embraced it for a long time. Mm -hmm. and I think they have a real. I mean, you know, Halloween in the in 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 the U.S. and Canada. It's a, it's a massive deal. I mean, it's so big in October, and the boy always comes back. If you you'll yeah. be happy to know this. Um, <laughs> It's always one of those that because it's just creepy with like the doll. It's just like it, it, it's got like you That's know, a great you, idea. In huh? October, yeah. I do a horror movie a night, right? Do you? I do. So it's like 31. Sometimes I'll do double headers, so it's like more than that. But I do, and it's a combination of like ones that I've seen before, but I always try to find new ones, right? right but right, the boy right. is always one of them. Like the first That's one. Amazing. That's amazing. I will tell, I will tell him that the director Brent. No, no, it's him. a great because the doll is so creepy. And even when the trailer, I remember seeing the trailer for that. Yeah. Being like, what yeah. is this? <laughs> like this doll. It's, it's like all these things. It's a very great, it's a, just a great idea. You know, this old couple. Yeah, Diana Hardcastle is the is the is the, the <laughs> mother, the granny, the great, you know, the older lady who's looking yeah. after this doll. And this American nanny comes, and then she just thinks that they're, they're mad. She thinks they're crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, it's a great idea. It's a great idea. So yeah, this is like a new bit for Pop Turner. Every time Rupert Evans comes on, like the boy <laughs> has to be mentioned. <laughs> Oh my God, no, the boy! Yeah, the I loved boy. it. I had, a, I had the happiest time on that. We shot that in Vancouver Island, actually. Yeah, absolutely. No, and it's when great. I read the script, it's set in Norwich. <laughs> I thought oh, this is great. I'm doing a movie at home, and then they, they were like, "No, you're going to Vancouver," and I'm like, "What?" So, you know, it's so crazy, Rupert. This was a blast catching up. Thank you so much for coming back on Pop Turnative, man. Listen, I love Pop Turnative, and uh, it's uh, such an honor to be asked, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Yeah, absolutely. So, a couple yeah. plugs quickly. I mean, Charmed, you're directing some episodes. Charmed's on yeah, the CW, so they can check that uh, out. Yeah, season four is uh, is happy. In fact, my my episode just um, just dropped, the one I directed, Perfect. episode uh, five. So, yeah. Isn't uh, that crazy a, that you yeah. just said that right now? Like, the episode you directed is out. It's crazy. It's so exciting. <laughs> it just came out last week. So, yeah. Um, social media plugs, Twitter, Instagram. Where can they follow you to keep up date with everything? Yeah, um, I'm on both Instagram and, and Twitter. I, I, I'm sort of, uh, I'm so bad at all that. Yeah. Um, but I try my best. Uh, yeah. They, so it's just your name, right? Rupert Evans? Rupert underscore Evans. You see the tick, the blue tick. Yeah. And the, <laughs> I think that's what happened. Yeah. All right. Um, well, this has been Pop Turf of YouTube.com slash Pop Turf for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Rupert Evans and PD Beats signing off. Go watch the boy. <laughs> Until next time, my friend. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.